So, you want to play some Zerg, hey? What's your experience with StarCraft? Like, nothing at many, all? Many, many years ago, when I was a ye little child, I played StarCraft. Oh, okay. So, basically, no versus experience. Basically none. Absolutely zero. Okay, perfect. Have you played... Well, I guess I was going to ask if you played bots, but I'm assuming probably not even that. Nope. He, he's played, um, he's played um, co-op with me before. Have you played any other RTS game? Uh, no. Okay. Do you get the idea of StarCraft? Like how it works with the economy and then building armies and then destroying? Yeah. yeah, okay. So let's just jump right into a game. We'll just see how it plays out and we'll teach you like the basics. And then maybe the next game, we'll get you to do it on your own. I think we won't worry about too much of the details when you're just starting out. So we'll just get you in a game and we'll go from there. Does that sound good? Yeah. Um, so there it is. There's your base. Got some drones. They're going to go start mining right away. You don't have to do anything besides make drones. Just get comfortable with that idea. If you want, you can send your overlord across the map. Just put it to wherever. It doesn't really matter where. <laughs> What's that drone doing? He's riding for the 12 pool. What do you mean? So let's start by control grouping your hatchery. So click on it and go control, let's say four. Control four. Perfect. Oh, that's the, <laughs> that's the larva. So we have the overlord as four. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So you see how, well, it, it's standard for me. I don't know what it is for you for for keybinds, I'm assuming it's the same thing. Um, S selects the larva and D makes the drone from the larva, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's basically all you're gonna need for a long time is four SD, four SD, four SD. Hit four, hit S, and then hit D. There you go. So in general, how it works with the early game is you get there's obviously different builds you can do, but the idea is you want a spawning pool and you want another hatchery. So whenever you feel comfortable, you can take your natural expand. So you're going to take your one of your drones and send it down to your natural, which is just south of your main base. And then when you get it there, you can build a hatchery at your minerals down there. Are you doing it? I got distracted. That's all good. Okay, take a drone and go get your natural. Oh, I don't even know what natural means. Uh, your second base below your main base. You're going to want to make a hatchery down there. Oh, he's trying to save you with me. That's why. Okay, see in the top right? After losing that... Oh, did we make three? Yeah, we did. Nice. Good. Yeah. <laughs> After losing that OB, we're supply blocked right now. So making those OBs is good. Um, take a drone and just send it south down your main ramp. Perfect. Okay, well. All right, so here's the drone. We're going to build a hatchery right there. Excellent. And it's on location in the right spot, too. Okay, so your speed is finishing up right now. And if you want, you can make some Zerglings. With that spawning pool, we can make Lings, and you can also make a Queen on your main base, your main hatchery. I would recommend doing that. <laughs> Alright, we're going layer. Or that getting a third, good. that's good. Third base is really good, too. He's going to lay attack, what do you mean? That okay. thing just open me out. That thing that just entered your base is uh, one of his workers. They sent him across the map just to get an idea of what the enemy's doing. You can do the same thing with one of your lings. You can do it with all six. You can do whatever you want, to be honest. But what I would recommend is get in the habit of constantly turning your larva into some form of unit. We're wow. not supply blocked, so we don't need OVs for a while. So you can make some more drones. And try and get as many drones as you can on your natural and your third. There's an optimal amount, and that's 16 on minerals and three on each gas. So let's try and hit perfect saturation at each one of our bases. All right, he's building a big army. <laughs> okay, um, you can make another queen at each one of your other bases as well, and also in your main. A queen? Yeah. Oh. There you go. And then at your natural and at your third as well. Your natural is your second base. So just make three queens. Yeah. Oh, not from the same hatchery. One oh, at each. My bad. That's all good. That's the difference between three building at once versus building three, but one after each other, right? It would take a lot longer to get three queens off just one base. Okay. Take all of your bases. So like click on your main base and then shift click on each of the other bases. Shift click? Huh? Yeah. So shift is going to add those bases to your selection. Okay. 
So click yeah. on your main and then shift click on your natural, shift click on your third. Right. Uh, it's control shift, um, I think it's control shift four. Control shift adds all of that type of selection. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not getting it. Okay. Control shift. Yeah, click on your, click on your main base, right? Yeah. And then while that's still selected, scroll down to your natural. Don't click anything else. What, well, what's my natural again? Your natural is south of your main base. It's the base down there, your second base. Yeah. And then you're going to shift click that. Yeah. Perfect. And then go to your third and shift click that one. Yeah. Perfect. Now go control four. Perfect. What you just did is you bound all of those hatcheries to the same control group. So when you hit four and you select the larva, it's going to select the larva from all three bases. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, Very handy. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So let's try and make as many drones as possible and actually hit four and right click on your naturals minerals, your second base minerals. My which natural? Your second base. So hit four and right click on the minerals at your second base. Perfect. So you've just bound the worker rally point to those minerals. That's saying all of the drones that we're going to make from here on out are going to rally to those minerals and start mining. OK. How about these guys here? Yeah. Uh, the ones that are just lazing around doing nothing, you can you can get those guys on uh, minerals if you want. Control F1, F2 is army. Control click, uh, there control it is. Control F1. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. OK, so now they're all on the move. Um, let's take seven out of our main base because we have 17 out of 10. So they're kind of going back and forth. You see them kind of moving around to the side. They're not optimally mining. So they would serve us better if they were sent to the natural or the third or something. I see that you're injecting on the third hatchery. That's really good. That's what those queens are supposed to do. One at each base and then get them all to uh, inject. So I see there's one down your ramp here and you're spreading creep, that's that's good too. Okay, get those queens back to each one of their own bases and let's try yeah. injecting the hatcheries. Good. It'll be, w when you select a queen, it'll be the V hotkey and then you click on the hatchery. Oh yeah, I've been doing that. Yeah, so get one at each base so that you can inject all of your bases, not just the one. One at each base. Yeah, send those queens back to each base. Very good, okay. Can you do the same thing that we did with the uh, bases? Select all of your queens. So click on one, shift click another, and shift click the third one. And once you have them all selected, hit control five. Control five? Yeah. So, v. yeah, and V, and then click on each one of the bases. And it should grab the one that's closest. Very good. So that's the whole idea of Zerg macro is you want to have queens at your hatcheries and injecting larva because larva is how we make units, right? So we want to have a lot of larva to make a lot of units. So anytime there's a hatchery that isn't being injected, we're technically falling behind on production. Um. I see that you're shift queuing into the third. That's good. That's forever going to have uh, larva coming out of it, but your main and your natural aren't, right? This is good though. Okay, you're kind of getting the idea. Um, there's one setting that we can change as well, and that's the camera hotkey, or well, base camera location, I guess, whatever it is. Uh, so what that's going to do is it'll cycle through, it'll move your camera to each one of your bases. And so when done correctly, you can select your queens, move to a base, inject, move to a different base, inject, move to a different base, inject. And all of that can happen super quick, but that'll be down the road a little bit. We're just getting familiar with the idea of Zerk macro. Um, let's take those mutas and see what we can do with them. You want to try attacking them? Yeah, sure. Okay, perfect. You uh, should bind that to control two. And then anytime you, let's say you want to like run away or like you select something and then you want to move your units, you can hit two, and then you have all of your mutas selected again. Nice. Okay, while we're attacking, let's try and make some more. Let's hit four, S, 
and then hold the T button down. Four S C. There you go. So all of those mutas are going to pop out and later on we can get good with binding them to the same group as the mutas so that they will eventually head over to where your current mutas are. Yeah, as it stands, you're basically winning the game with these mutas, so that's good. Okay, so at this stage of the game, your main focus is just keep making more and more drones. Everything around this time costs minerals. Um, buildings are going to cost minerals. Your queens are going to cost minerals. Lings, drones, all of that. Overlords, that's all minerals. So it's not as important to have as much gas. Eventually we will need that gas. Um, but just to explain how the flow of the game usually goes, so get your second base, you get two queens, you get a third base, you get some lings for a little defense, get speed on the go, keep injecting with your queen. Do they just automatically inject into the base? They won't. You have to select them and hit V and then click on the base. So this is looking really good. We have a little bit of oversaturation in the main. You can see that the minerals deplete, just as it said there. So you can take seven out of your main base and send them to your, well, I guess go to your natural. There's only six there. And if you're trying to get exactly seven, you can just select all of them and then shift click each icon, the drone icon, until you have seven selected. All of your tech buildings seem like they're finishing up here. It depends on what you want to make, but let's turn all of that larva into units because we have... Is. Yeah, sure. That's perfect. We have a lot of larva. You've done a good job with the injects. At your Roach Warren, there's an upgrade called Glial Reconstitution. You can get that for extra speed on your roaches. And your Evolution Chamber, you can get plus one attack or carapace. Melee is going to be good for the Zerglings. It's not going to help out with the Roaches. And remember how we talked about queuing up three Queens? Is It's going to take longer than having one Queen at each base. The same is true with upgrades too. If you want to have three upgrades, it's probably best to build three Evolution Chambers. So we have one, you can build two more. And when you get the chance, build under Advanced Mutation, build the Infestation Pit, and we'll try and get a Hive going. That's going to enable your Tier 3 units. Also, you only technically need one layer <clears throat> and one hive to enable uh, tier three, tier two and tier three. So anything more than one is kind of just a waste when it comes to layers and, and hives. Same thing with all of your other tech structures. You wouldn't really need two Baneling Nests. You wouldn't need two Roach Warrens. You are going to want generally two or three Evolution Chambers for the reasons we discussed to be able to research multiple things at the same time. When your hive is done, to the left of it, there's that spire. You should turn that into a greater spire. Perfect. It's a greater spire. Excellent. So let's make some corruptors right now. So 4SC and make as many as you can. You have them selected? Yeah. yeah okay. So hit control two. So that's your corruptor group and hit B. Just hold that down and it's going to make as many broodlords as possible. There we go. So broods are your flying tier three tech unit and they do a lot of damage. Um, and they're more importantly, they're hard to kill because you can't really get underneath them when there's enough of them. How they attack is they send these little broodlings down to the ground. And so it kind of yeah. ends up blocking the units that are trying to get onto the broodlords. They have a pretty lengthy range. So hit two, hit A, and then left click on the back of his base. You can do that on the minimap. Just click on the red on the minimap. 2A, left click on the red. So this little Brunoise attack, they have a long range and they just swarm everything in human sight. Oh my god. Yeah, it's kind of unfair and I hate playing against them, it's fine. Cool. There you go. Yeah. That's perfect. Nice. I will say you're doing pretty good. For, for that being your second game, you're picking up the injects super quickly. You're getting the idea of setting your rally points and, and binding your units to control groups. And if you were to hit the ladder, honestly, uh, that's all it really is, is make your hatchery, um, get some drones on it, take a third base, tech up, get your lair going, eventually get up to tier three if you want to go that route. There's a lot of different options. You can decide not to play a later game. You can just build a spawning pool right away and send a bunch of lings across and try and win early. Or you can try yeah. and macro and get more drones and more tech and then win with the higher tier units. It's up to you how you want to play, but you seem to have a pretty good understanding so far. You know what we should do? Let's try one more game, but we'll make it a difficult opponent. 
okay and i won't okay. say anything so it'll be up to you to defend yourself it'll be up to you to get your drones figured out let's try that i'm gonna go in another voice chat with plant and we're gonna discuss the game in private uh, okay i i like that i'm watching this and i'm getting a slight grasp on how the hell the zigs in my lobby play because i just i still i made it to diamond tree not knowing how what zig structures are oh really yeah, I never learned anything about Zig, and I think that's why my PVZ is so bad, because when I scout Zig, I don't know what they're building. It's kind of tough, or the reason I mentioned with the tech building, you only really need one tech building. So you can kind of confuse your opponent as Zerg a lot easier by building a Roach Warren in an obvious spot that they scout, and in the back of your base, you have a Baneling Nest. So in actuality, you're going Banes, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot easier to see something that the Zerg has and then think that they're going that route and then they end up building something differently compared to, oh, this guy has... I mean, I guess you could do the same thing with Protoss, but it's a bit different when you have, you know, eight gates building. You go, okay, I think he's going to do some kind of gateway-based ground aggression, right? Versus, yeah. oh, this guy has a Baneling Nest. I'm not really sure if he's going to use it. I'm not sure if he even knows that he has a window of opportunity here this early in the game to do a Baneling Bust. Like, a lot of times they just build the buildings. Like, you even saw him. He made a tech building and then made all the other tech buildings, right? So he's got his natural, and he has the gases, but he hasn't put any drones on the gases yet. Um, oh. I did notice he was scouting, which is very interesting. I think he's trying to... To do what the boss were doing to him but i don't, again i guaranteed he's not gonna know what he's looking at but at least he knows uh you know the rays and where they are on yeah. the map that kind of thing those are pretty important things to know so we're seeing the spawning pool let's see if we get some is that, i don't know why that keeps happening okay spawning pool evil chamber but no gas double evil chamber no gas that's very interesting <laughs> yeah. i think he I think he was trolling when he said he understood the eco part because I don't think he fully understands how mineral to gas outcomes come about. Yeah. But so it's be a fun time for him to realize, oh, I just had a lot of gas last game. Right. I don't expect them to really know that right off the bat until they know how much a unit costs, like a roach being 75, 25, then they go, okay, well, I'm going to need three times as much minerals as gas like assuming yeah. no building spores or queens or other hatcheries right he should be making two queens i think he might have forgotten to do that like yeah i don't think we impose enough about queens and not like i think he thinks queens are a bit later on into the mid game oh it looks like he's selected it he might go come on come on come on oh he's going uh, again yeah. Never mind. <laughs> no I, speed i'm so scared just lair first yeah, I'm so scared. He might just want to text straight into um, Brood Lords. Oh, yeah, we might have sent him down the wrong path here. Oh, no. He's because going that, to get that... stomped by this army. This is not yeah. looking good. Unless he magically scouts it and starts making a lot of links, we might, he might be in a bit of trouble. The only Especially thing I think people. that can save him at this point is, you know, the other games he was building spines out front of his base. I think if he were to just make a bunch of links and spines right now, I think he'd be okay. But honestly, all I really want to see is him just convert larva into units. It doesn't really matter. Even if he yeah. dies to an attack, as long as he's wanting to spend his money, that's perfect. Yeah, like I already put some ahead of the curve. Yeah. He's trying to make more drones. I think he's at the point now where he realizes he has enough money, uh, but he can't produce. And so yeah. if he realizes that in-game, he'll know, okay, well, there's no point in me having all this money if I can't make these units. So that's that's where I'm falling behind. i got to get more larva. I have to have my queen earlier. Maybe I don't get my lair. So this is looking real rough right now. I think he's going to lose the natural for sure. His queen's yeah. going to die. Unfortunately, he is making lings, but it might not but be But it's enough. a bit late. It's a bit late on to make the lings, yeah. yeah. If he gets the inject in the main, he still doesn't have, like, a better tech. It's just lings right now, so if he, for some reason, was able to get a bunch of uh, roaches, then oh, he could be a lot better. Uh, all oh, no, he moved the lands of lings. Yeah, they were just rallied out front of his base. Oh, what does he do? Let's see. I'm going to go first person. Let's see the panic. <laughs> setting in. He's probably confused okay. why his building just turned into a bunch of attacking units, but that's probably gonna be it. 
All right, let's pop back in. How's it yeah, going? That's still hope. Hero drone. Oh no, you got eliminated. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So I, I guess that's something we can mention. There are a couple ways to win in StarCraft. And one of them is to kill all of your opponent's tech, which is what he just did there. Yeah, when you have no buildings left, that counts as being out of the game. Even though you have units, like overlords and drones, unless there's a building on the map, you're technically out of the game. Uh -huh. But yeah, that was... Uh, I, I think we forgot the queens for a little bit, and also the gas was a little bit late, so all we could really make was a bunch of lings. And it's hard to know when they're going to attack, but later on we can explain how to, to see attacks coming and how to scout with OVs and have a ling outside their base so that when they push out you can see. There's a bunch of little tricks like that. But yeah, right. not bad for your first session, man. Yeah, you actually have this up. Another D. That's right. All right. GG's. That was awesome. GG's. Thank you for taking this time, Ghost. Of course. This is nice. Yeah, anytime you want to play again, just let me know.